Welcome back to Sims Complete. Matt Sims, Phil Sims. We're doing a little recap of the Giants Browns game today. Big guy. That was uh that was a hell of a game for the the Giants on the road there against the Cleveland Browns. Tough matchup always uh in the road for the NFL and especially too against a very talented Browns defense. Uh some of your initial thoughts from that that Giants Browns game from today. Okay, you know, being a fan, the first thing is I'm, the game I turned it on and I'm um worried that the defense of the Cleveland Browns is just going to overrun the giant offense. And I mean, first off, Miles Garrett, he's there. We know who the defensive coordinator is. Right. So, you know, yeah, Jim Schwartz. So he doesn't care. It's like everybody's hair's on fire and let's just go. <laughs> and it's and Miles Garrett sits, the, you know, the stage for him. And, and I think just too, that saying that, and then really the talent that they have on the defensive side, Probably still, again this year, the best secondary in the NFL. So all that was my thought of the game, going into the game for the Giants. But go ahead. Quickly, I changed as I saw the Giants had a pretty damn good game plan on both sides of the ball for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I mean, well, luckily they were to able to endure uh, an early fumble by Gray. Uh, right. a, a potential wow. interception by Daniel Jones, which was kind of like, man, this is not the way that we want to start this road game. Uh, the way that they did. But fortunately, uh, because of a penalty, able to keep the football and move on from that. Uh, so start off the game with a fumble punt. Uh, and then from there, the touchdown drive, 13 plays, 81 yards, taking up oh. seven minutes and 44 uh, seconds off the play clock. And this is where we kind of see the the Daniel Jones, Malik neighbors, uh, just the possibilities of what that looks like for this offense. And I thought that Daniel Jones, uh, despite that early snafu, uh, really looked comfortable there in the first half after that. Okay, a couple things. Just say it. First off, Daniel Jones. Yeah. Are, are these numbers right? 24, 34, 236, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Yes, sir. And I'll, and I'll say this. Brian Dayball, real quick, calling the place. Looked good in that hat today on the sideline. Nice hat. But <laughs> I, I liked what he did. In other words, get rid of the football quick, throw in the screens to make the defense go side to side, and just trying to keep them off balance. Right. I thought that that was really, really good. Daniel Jones was only sacked one time. Yep. And all that's great. But I'll say this real quick. Watching the game, he made many, many throws with the pressure really tight on him. And throwing, worried about it, the ball getting hit at the line of scrimmage, hit his arm. And, and I thought also he moved into pocket a few times to give himself a little extra time and made some throws. So overall... Daniel Jones, I'm just going to talk about him right now. Of course. The way he played, and and the big thing too, Matt, he threw with accuracy, and man, he was letting that damn thing go. Right. That's what I really, he threw with great confidence, but he threw it to protect the, I think, the offense or himself away from the Cleveland defense because there's some ball hawking dudes, yeah. and they don't just go to knock it down. They're trying to intercept passes. So for Daniel Jones, Hey, first game doesn't look so bad now that we see the Minnesota Viking defense, does it? Yeah, that's right. How did the, the great offense of C.J. Stroud and the Houston Texans pretty rough for that that Minnesota defense? I don't and mean I, to get up. To no, get up and, and I here. think that you make a good point, too, because when we reviewed that football game, Giants-Vikings, you were discussing the fact that you felt like Daniel Jones seemed a little rushed. He was trying to play fast. Uh, trying to go through his reads quickly Too quick. and you know it just you know yeah like you said the mental processing of it just wasn't matching kind of how he was seeing the field today I thought we finally saw a you know which is crazy too against the Cleveland Browns defense oh, a I comfortable know. Daniel Jones reading the field trusting his instincts and then of course we see you're right like the size right his pocket presence mm. the arm strength and you know, for, for the most part, making some really clean reads. I want to say at half, he was maybe 17 of 19. He was about 180, 170 yards, something like that. So really good decision-making, good play calls too by Dave Ball, especially early on that football game to kind of weather the storm against the talent, the defense. Yeah. Um, and the exciting thing I thought too was seven different receivers were able to get a catch today. You know, so spreading the wealth around, still no sign of Jalen Hyatt really in this offense. But, right. you know, Devin Singletary doing a good job of running the football and then also getting catches out of the backfield. Malik Neighbors, all the things that they're doing with him, trying to get him involved too in the run game, which I thought was a great little mix in there to get him going. 
How about um, that call? How about yeah. that call though? Right. I, I did like it. I said, please don't just hand it off and run up the middle. Right, right. But I, I'm not sure I was really happy at first. We're gonna do a you know sprint to the right yeah. with the wide receiver, but it but it worked out. And that kind of shows you again, too, Matt, the game planning, mm -hmm. how important it is, and having those little plays ready for situations just like that. But go yeah. ahead. What we finish what you were saying. No, anyway. and, and I think too, we just we've realized now that just it's neighbors and Wandell Robinson. They're the one two punch on this team. Hopefully they can get Theo Johnson involved a little bit more. They, it was close today. Three targets, one missed on, on a touchdown opportunity in the red zone. But those are the two guys that I think this offense needs to continue to build up in the skill group. And that's Wandel. Right. That's that's Malik Neighbors. And we saw Malik do some phenomenal things. Just his his ability to contort his body and catch the football. That's something that we haven't seen in a Giants uniform uh, really literally since Odell Beckham Jr., and uh, that was really refreshing, I think, for for all of us fans watching that game to see, you know, wow, we we got a star at receiver again. Yeah, yeah. I thought Jonathan Vilma, who was the analyst today for Fox, did a really good job of, of kind of putting that all together and Daniel Jones and yeah. really shedding a good light on Daniel Jones the whole day long because he looked at the film last week against the Washington Commanders. That looked good to him. And then seeing what he did today and how it went. But, you know, I think, Things went really well for the Giants. But then the Cleveland Browns defense, you could sense it on TV. Yeah. They go, you know what? The hell with this. Right. And they just started going all out. And that's when it really got tough for the Giants. But I want to go to the Malik Neighbors. And, you know, I'm always kind of talk sometimes confidence-wise. But I said, I think he's going to be that kind of guy. But I'm not super sure. You know, we've seen many receivers come to the NFL who were – star stars in college and it doesn't translate but these last couple of weeks man they've changed my mind i'm like after today the catch down the sideline when he out jumps the defender for the long completion yep that was the awesome. first touchdown catch that was awesome because daniel jones again here they are they're right in his face they're trying to hit his arm the ball just he makes a great catch gets his feet in ground and you know the other one as they showed the replays on fox i mean hell there was a bunch of hands and everything. I don't even know how neighbors saw the ball coming through. The, and Daniel Jones threw that football really yeah. hard. That but the good missile. thing is, the good thing is, he throws spirals. Uh, he does throw it hard. Receivers love that. You and I have talked about that a lot. And Malik Neighbors, hey, now a defense definitely has to go. We got to pay attention to this dude because right. he's the one that can propel them to win games. And refreshing for us Giants fans, too, just seeing the Giants execute in that low red zone area, especially because right. a week ago against the Commanders, struggled to get two-point conversions because of uh, the, the issue with the kicking and all that. But luckily for us, able to score touchdowns in that low red zone area, kick the extra point, uh, missed a field goal late in the football game, which kind of made it interesting again. But mm. overall, though, you got to be excited about what Daniel Jones and Blake Neighbors showed us today. Uh, Devin Singletary, um, you know, running hard, made the the really smart decision there, high football IQ to slide right, right before scoring the touchdown, which is just you know shows you just like how much of a a team guy is, and also too just how aware he is in that present moment. Because I mean, damn, almost all of us would have just ran right through that goal line for that touchdown, man. But uh, you know, that, that, was, that was a really yeah. cool moment. What I thought of, it was the right move. The announcers liked the move. They didn't like it. They said they love it. Yeah. And I think back to what two years ago when Joe Flacco was with the Jets and right. the Cleveland Browns made a mistake and ran out of bounds, stopped the clock, and the Jets scored twice to win the game. Right. And, you know, it's amazing. You know, you think, oh, there's no way those things can happen. But it's the NFL. Anything can happen. Yeah. The last thing, you know, one more thing about the giant game and Shane Bowen. I looked at his history with the Tennessee Titans. Right. He was probably the second most conservative defensive coach in the NFL next to the New York Jets, who right. were the most conservative. But we have not seen Mr. Conservative in these games so far. I mean, he went after definitely not today. No. No, today they blitzed and yeah. you know it was really working for him. Yep. And uh could have been even better, but they've got pressure. Dexter Lawrence once again. Man, he I'm not saying he's Reggie White, but he's really damn good. I know that. So. <laughs> well, that's quite a compliment, too, because he's 
he's a Hall of Famer and one of the greatest to ever do it. And and yeah, I, I to add to what you're saying, Giants eight sacks on the day, seventeen wow. quarterback hits, and, and that really I think was the story too of of why the Giants were able to hold on to the victory because they were performing well on offense and moving the football for long sustaining drives. You know, the two scoring drives, thirteen plays, fourteen plays, eighty one yards, ninety three yards. Uh, but then also too, just a lot of hits, a lot of pressure uh, on Deshaun Watson early in this football game really, wow. really hindered them from getting in rhythm. Uh, Bobby Okereke and Micah McFadden, uh, just again, like those two guys, oh. unsung heroes for this defense, but just, man, they just show up each and every week. And uh, Jason Panak really played extremely well too, all over the field, seven tackles. He even got involved with a sack as well. Uh, and then we saw the effect too. Of Brian Burns, Spider Man, right? With his one sack, his tackle for loss, the force fumble, uh, which was big too. And then Chapman, right? Another guy, oh, man, yes. game wrecker today, yeah. along with Dexter Lawrence. A lot of lot of really impressive moves in that interior part of the defensive line for him. So uh, a really good collective group uh victory for this defense today. Of course, everybody remembers Chapman, right? You know, the Houston Texans, uh, the preseason game. Where he ran down, was it a running back or a wide receiver? I can't remember down the left sideline. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm not exactly sure who it was. Yeah. Yeah, but he's, I, I don't know what his registered height is. I think they love him as a pass rusher that he could be, I don't know who they compared him to. And who's the guy I'm thinking of? John Randall. Okay. You know, it's not going to be John Randall, but, you know, that body type that can really run as we've seen a yeah. couple times. So that was really good. But you're right about Micah. Um, McFadden and Bobby Okereke, holy Christ, yeah. they're everywhere. And I'll give this, uh, Thibodeau today, he was in there and had some plays and yeah. could have got a sack. I don't know if he got a – he ended up getting up. Did he get a half a sack? Or I don't think that he did. I'll double check here, but I, I don't believe that he did. Yeah. Um, and then, but of he, course, you know, sometimes early on, you know, we'll see some of these stats kind of change too, especially the sacks and, and those things. But uh, Nunez Roaches, he recorded half a sack today. Yeah, one. Kayvon recorded half a sack today. So he like, did. There you yeah, go. Yeah, he was he was involved there with a few of them that like you know he was damn close and you know it's always oh. unfortunate that some it, of these guys get cheated out of the sacks and all that stuff. Oh, they <laughs> they caused the t the quarterback to move right into somebody else. Yeah, yeah. And I know it, I can't imagine what you feel like. You could right. you in the NFL you can be a defensive end or a pass rusher and have. <laughs> You know, five great rushes where you almost get the quarterback and you get no sacks. And even though it might turn into sacks, you know what I mean? I think about it all right. the time. I watch them. I go, God, that must be a frustrating job. So, <laughs> <laughs> but the Giants, they're going to need all of this. This is early stuff. Just yeah. watching the Cowboys today. I'm going to say this all week long about the Cowboys. Why you don't even bother to run? I'm, and I'm really being kind of serious. Yeah. Just be an all out passing team. Right, because it, it's just it wears the defense out, because Dak and they get open and it, you know the he's getting good protection for the most part all year long, mm -hmm. and it, you know it's just trouble down the field. And they when they get behind, they're good. They just keep throwing it, and all of a sudden today was a great example. All of a sudden they're getting destroyed, and the next thing you know they got a chance to maybe even win the game. So. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I think that is something that the Cowboys should look into. And uh, well, I, honestly, I hope they don't figure it out uh, for this week's Thursday night football game where it's Cowboys Giants. Let's let them solve that that problem later on down the line. But see, yeah. see, the problem is I'm thinking about that game. Yeah, I know. And that's why I say it. I yeah. go, damn, I hope they just don't come out and throw it every damn down. Yeah. And I'm going to well, do the game on Westwood Radio, Westwood Radio okay. this week with Iron Eagles. So oh, I'm that's great. I'm preparing stuff in my head. Yeah, That's yeah. All right. So, yeah, you you already know how you want the Dallas Cowboys to play. Now, good. You know, I mean, that that's why, you know, Joe Shane and the boys, they brought in all these guys to rush the passer and, you know, let, let's go. I, I, I would out. like, yeah, I would like to take my chances with the crew that I just saw today, uh, you know, against that Dallas offensive line in a lot of passing situations because they were impressive. They were disruptive. And they you're were. right. I think, I think Sh Shane Bowen really kind of showed uh, a different, side of him right as far as a defensive play caller and giving you know teams now something to to look after right Don't when they're preparing yeah. for them, you know and it's not just the standard you know safe look um and, and i think that was key we saw the jets do that we saw the giants do it and both have a great amount of success you know from from last week to this week so i expect to see a little bit more of that
Matt, you know, nowadays to win, you got to have a lot of stuff going on. I think you just can't, nobody can just overpower and be dominating in, in that way. Right. And uh, you, you just got to be able to teach it round and teach it flat. You know, you got to, you got to be very versatile and you got to keep changing for this league because so many great players. Uh, so I think the Giants are showing. I thought Brian Dayball called a terrific game today. I he really did. did. He did. Right on the mark. And, you know, what would it be like to be a play caller? Go, got this great play, but damn, we only got to – we're sending everybody out. Well, you know, my one words. concern for the Giants is it just, you know, I, I know a lot of new pieces on the offensive line and all that. The pass protection has been better. There's no it doubt has. about that. The run blocking to me is still like a little – eh, it, it needs some improvement, you know. And, and really, it was a very average running day until Devin Singletary ran ran for that 43-yarder to kind of seal the game. Seal the game. You know, so that that really, you know, skewed the way that we saw the, the final stat line as far as total rushing attempts and yards. Uh, but that would be my one thing for the Giants offense. Like, can you be a little bit more balanced and run the football just a little bit more effectively? Uh, you know, in some of those down and distances early on, but well, you, you know, know, Dallas they, is yeah, it's, Dallas it's still is the, it's still the Browns. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and Dallas is not great at stopping the run. Yeah, we see. So that. we'll see how that goes. But you know, real quick, let's if you don't mind, let's do a couple quarterbacks real quick before yeah. we call it a night. Yeah, we got to start out with it. We talked about him in the preseason. I think you and you're the one that told me this. Tennessee Titans are playing. You said, watch, you got to watch their quarterbacks. They look different because Brian Callahan's there. You know, he's working with them and all that. Yeah. And when I did, I looked it up and I watched Malik Willis. I went, oh my God. You sure that's Malik Willis? Good job, Brian Callahan. You got Malik Willis got him ready. so well. He beat your ass today. <laughs> so that's what I was thinking all day. Yeah. I go, he trained his ass all off season. And I don't know, they traded him, but I've always heard, I, you know, just kind of heard. They didn't want to trade him. And of course, after two weeks, I know it's two weeks. Yeah. But I saw it in the preseason too. Yeah. He last week against the Indianapolis Colts, is it was it Indianapolis? Yes. He literally played a perfect game. Yeah. 12 of 14, 122, one touchdown, 41 yards rushing. And I watched it closely. He right. made the right decision. He made accurate throws. He threw it away once. And when he was in trouble, he would run. And man, you know. Matt LaFleur, the play calling, they just had a rhythm going. I didn't get to watch the game today, but again, what did he do today? Let's see, today. 13, 13 and 19. 19. Yeah, 202 Two. and a touchdown. One. And how many yards rushing? Uh, and then rushing six for 73. Oh, yeah. How, and a ooh. touchdown. What do you think they're saying in Tennessee? My God, we got the – but, you know, <laughs> I, I think it came down to this. You know, Mason Rudolph was the backup. They yeah. made him the backup. And that kind of caused it. And I heard, and maybe I heard it from your your brother, is that he's good friends with Jordan Love. Uh, they had the same. I think he he said they have the same agent. So maybe that's the reason why he he may have said I want out. Got traded to Green Bay. He's the backup, and boom, boom. So Jordan Love, yep. you know, he's going to heal a lot faster now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, well, yeah, you know, I mean, you know. And, and what I think is is really telling too is just Malik Willis and how comfortably he looks just like in the drop back passing game. You know that really is where uh, those first few years I was like, man, he has not gotten better as just a passer in the pocket. And you know I don't know what he did this off season. You know Callahan, whatever he did, yes. all that stuff. Like it is night and day just how much more improved he is as a pure passer. And then yeah, it goes back to the floor being able to prepare this young man, you know, only being part of his organization for two weeks and he's two and oh with this guy, you know, That's and awesome. we saw too. I mean, Tennessee is no slouch. That, that defense is legit. They got some oh, ballers yeah. on that side. It took everything that Aaron Rodgers had, you know, and, and the jets to win there on the road. And, you know, the Packers, they had a pick six for a touchdown. So that was big. And, you know, but Malik Willis really played a solid football game today. And, uh, you know, kudos to him, man, and, and the team for getting that done. Yeah, it's kind of – it's. I'm always happy for guys that kind of – it's rough, it's rough, or whatever. It's not going their way. And then they yeah. turn it around and we do it. Let's go to one more. We'll a couple of real quick ones. Andy Dalton. Man. I'll, let me start. Uh, y'all let you do the numbers and all that. But Andy Dalton, when they said he had the job, you remember seeing his interview? He was like – 
basically, I am so excited to do this again. Yeah. Or whatever. It wasn't like, oh, I feel sorry and for poor Bryce. You know, he he I'm sure he's very nice to Bryce, but he didn't say that. He just said, I'm really excited about playing, about starting. And he kind of put it out there. I was like, man, you kind of open yourself up a little here with some of the things with such strength is how he was saying it. Yeah. But damn, did he back it up? So go from there. No, he really did. 26 of 37, 319, three TDs. Uh, oh. and, and really what it just, what it reminds I'm, you is that like, all right, you know, hey, Bryce, hopefully he figures it out. Hopefully he becomes a solid pro. But like Andy Dalton is a pro, you know, and you saw that from snap one to the end of the game, the way that he was moving in the pocket, the way that he was seeing the field, uh, you know, <laughs> Deontay Johnson, I mean, you know, he hit him on a few in cuts that were just like daggers to Damn. the Las Vegas defense and the rhythm, the power. You know, we we kind of forget, too, when we did our best backups, right? Andy Dalton was a guy that we we discussed. Oh. Like he's he's up there. He's one of the better ones that, that's out yeah. there. And, you know, dude, dude can play. Dude's been around. Dude's played in playoff games. You know, he knows what he's doing. And, uh, man, he really did. He showed out today. And. Uh, you know, the offense really responded to Jubba Hubbard, uh, 21 of 114, uh, really played extremely well. And and he got everyone involved in the passing game. You know, I want to say that maybe eight different receivers had a reception today. Uh, so, you know, kudos right. to Andy Dahl and his performance. Yeah, good for him. But let's go this real quick. Last yeah. one. Okay. It's amazing. These what, what do we call them? It's Baker Mayfield down there. You know, I don't know if you call Derek Carr, whatever, but Sam Darnold, 3-0 and Minnesota now. Yeah, yeah. 3-0, and and he looks – just going highlights. I can't wait to watch it all, but he looks – look, he's a big dude. He moves, you know, well enough for the NFL for sure. He's accurate, throws a pretty ball, spins it. Uh, so there's a lot there to like. And you know what, Matt? You know, you played the NFL. I did, you, you know, you grow and you learn and everything, and you just learn how to manage yourself in the game better. And that I think that's well, I'm not going to say that about um, um, Andy Dalton because he led the Bengals to, I think, five straight playoffs. Yeah. So he knows how to do this. No doubt. But for Sam Darnold with the Jets, it didn't work out his way. But talk about him real quick because I'm happy for him. But, man, he has looked good first three games of the year. Yeah, well, when we were picking the games earlier this week, me and Bob Pop on Sirius XM NFL Radio, we do the show airing it out every Friday. And, you know, we really went to, you know, we like both defenses. We think both defenses get after the passer. They they can really disrupt plays. They can cause turnovers. They You know, all that stuff. The quarterback hits. Brian Flores, D'Amico Ryans, right? And then – Papa was like, well, who's the best quarterback? And that's CJ Stroud. And that's who I'm going with my pick. And I was just like, ah, I don't know, man. You know, right now I got to stick with the hot hand and Sam Darnold's playing maybe the best. Yes. In the entire NFL at the quarterback position right now. I mean, is that a wild thing to say right now? But Sam Darnold might be the top performing quarterback through the first three weeks of the NFL as just far as how it looks. Hmm. With the the plays that they're generating, his decision making, and the who they beat, which they're playing, and and exactly right, and who they're be, they're not beating slouches, you know. Now, of course, the Giants game was like okay, you know, but uh, these last two weeks have been very impressive, and man, he did not take his foot off the gas at all, and, and really, the best one was his little scramble to the left and throw uh, oh, nice, the touchdown nice there. That's when you're just like, man, that's. Dude is yeah. just feeling it. That was, yeah. that was, as the kids say, a heat check on that yeah. one right there. Because, <laughs> you know, he was just playing phenomenal football. And, hey, again, Kevin O'Connell, you could see how emotional he is mm. just talking about this. And how, you know, that's when you know it's like it's important to him that Sam mm -hmm. Darnold performs well. Yeah. You know, and, and that's where – but, like, in a, in a on a personal level, and I think that's what's really exciting right now. The defense is playing lights out. I mean, oh. C.J. Stroud and the boys really couldn't do anything offensively, and Sam Darnold and the Vikings were just moving the ball effortlessly down the football field all day today. So it was really yeah. a really fun game to watch. Yeah, so, you you know, it, it changes the narrative a little bit. People don't go back. Yeah. Now we kind of understand a little more. The Giants weren't ready. The season they weren't grooved enough to be ready, yeah. but they played a really good defense, right? You know, in the Minnesota Vikings, 
who I even said when the game was over, I said, wow, they do a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's confusing. And it, do you think they're going to do this? It's what whatever. But you're right. Um, now, how do we look at C.J. Stroud? I mean, we still look at him, and he, I don't mean it that way. But he struggled, too, against this defense today. Yeah. Right. And the Houston offense, which I think is one of the best in the league, really, really struggled too. So, you know, we didn't overjudge the preseason. It's the first time maybe in my life I haven't. But uh, trying to be careful about overjudging these early season games. And, you know, it's I, I know everybody's got to do a job in the media and on TV. But God almighty, oh, are they going to fire the coach? They're 0-2. Are they going to bench the quarterback? Oh, it's just – is it that bad that this is actually like yeah. real stuff we're talking about? And the answer is well, no. Well, the truth is that nobody actually wants to do the work and actually watch the game and then maybe go back and watch the film of the game and how it really took place. They just want to go off on a whim and act like the fans do and not do any research and, and just get the clickbait. You know, that's really what it is. They, they just want, you know, that attention for that that quick second, you know. So, Here, here's my favorite, Matt. Here, yeah. I, here, I got it. I even got it a few times this week. Right. Well, do you know over the last seven years that they've done this and that? And I went, well, there's not a guy on that team that's part of seven years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, we've yeah. gone through three coaches, but we're going to – so. Today, yeah, three you coaches, bet. four different general managers, but yeah, seven years ago. Yeah. I mean, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Just a, like, I didn't think Denver, I said, wow, Denver, I know they can put this together because of the coach. And I believe like I do in most of these young quarterbacks, Bo Nix, they go down to Tampa who we're beat Detroit. My God, they're great. They're this. Yeah. And um, look what happened. They get dominated. They're absolutely right. dominated today. So let's. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, like you you said earlier, uh, you don't want to buy too much into what teams are doing these these first few weeks of the season. But at the same time, towards the end of the year, we will look back on the schedule and we will say to ourselves, well, yeah, why does why do the Vikings have the opportunity to have home field advantage in the wild card or win the division or this or that? And, you know, it'll be because they performed well in September. You know, and they, yeah, they won on the road versus the Giants. They beat the San Francisco 49ers at home. You know, they really slapped essentially the Houston Texans at home again. So, uh, team. you know, yeah, you know, they're the hot team right now. And, you know, you'd rather be the hot team at the end of the year, but still right now they're the hot team. They're playing really good football. Um, and another sign sighting again, too, of just like, damn, Green Bay. Like, why'd you let Aaron Jones go? He is awesome. I mean, that dude is as a baller. And I, uh, I, I, yeah. is it what was it? He got hit or he's injured? I don't know. I never looked at Aaron Jones at Green Bay like he was anything to do with the problem. I always thought he was part of, of all solutions. Yeah. And you're right. Man, can he? He is so damn fast. Yeah. Rush well, for over 100 him. yards today. He had another about 40 something out of the backfield, too. So it's, uh, you it's know, he's, he's a double edged sword that way. He's he's the ultimate weapon for them on offense to go along with Justin Jefferson. And uh, and Naylor played well again, too, for the Vikings. So how about that? Yeah. They yeah. got some dudes on that team, and it's it's fun to watch. All right, um, that was a that was a fifteen minute quick uh, podcast that went that into was, thirty or whatever. So yeah, we're going know. into thirty now, but that's okay. Uh, let's but just that's stay our, Let, Let's yeah. go into tomorrow's right now. You ready? Let, let's tape another one now <laughs> yeah, for tomorrow. That's right. No, I, I think my wife would kill me. But I hear you. Um, All right, good stuff. Yeah. Giants recap. Congratulations against the Browns. Great win, right? Awesome. Great performances by the quarterbacks. I'm Matt Sims. He's Phil Sims. He's the GOAT, number 11. You the man. Oh, yeah. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on Sims Complete. Appreciate it. See you. All right. Good night.